best thing that photography has given to me is my memory. Looking through my contacts, it's like I was right there. I can go back and remember exactly that moment. The feeling, it's like a visual memory. When I was growing up, either you were black or white. There was no in-between. They used to call me the N-word going to school when I was little. I had a friend in kindergarten and she was a white girl. I remember going to her house and she couldn't answer the door and then her mother answered, she said, don't come here, you know, we, you know, and slammed the door in my face. The way it was explained to me was that we were second class citizens. Well, I'm gonna be the best person that I can be. I don't know why I'm tearing up. My high school uh, counselor had said, well, why do you want to go to college? And he said, you're just going to scrub floors or, you know, be a domestic. And so, you know, and that was it. My camera, it became my best friend. Photography is very healing. I had graduated from Howard University in pre-med. So I think the family had high hopes. One of my friends said, come to New York with me and I think you should model. When someone said, $100 an hour, I was like, well, I don't think of myself as a model, but if they think I could do it, well, I'm gonna do it. The paycheck, I could live all six months and do my photography. <laughs> photography was always there. It was my sense of truth. So there was this go -see, and there was a partition in the waiting room, and I heard these photographers talking about was photography an art form or not? And my ears perked up. There was a lot of Kamangi members, a wonderful group of black photographers that came out of the black arts movement, civil rights movement. They wanted to show black people from their own sense of truth. Let's show them how we see, how we feel. Lou Draper thought I was a really good photographer, and he says, hey, you, you, you know, you should join Kamangi. So some of those images, I was like, oh wow, I'm so proud to be part of this. <laughs> by one day, I'm like, one day I'm gonna be in the Museum of Modern Art. <laughs> it's like, that's like saying, I'm gonna fly to the moon in a rocket. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know they like my portfolio because I knew it was a good portfolio. This and Kiss Merrick said, these are just beautiful works of art. We want to acquire two for a permanent collection. I didn't even realize it was like history. The Invisible Man is about black culture. It took place in Harlem. It talks about visibility, but yet being invisible. Invisible to most Americans. But I had my take on it. You see Harlem, not really knowing who these people are, but yet having the photograph of a place. I was a big fan of August Wilson. And those characters spoke to me. They had the love, the, the conflicts, you know, the pain, the joy, the romance. So when I saw these characters, I decided, I'm gonna go photograph his hometown. I understood all these value systems. I mean, even approaching anyone on the street, I'm, I'm, I'm shy. But I think it also made me a little more sensitive to other people. It's helped me to capture moments where people are unaware. 
I photographed Tina Turner in a poignant moment where she's just to herself, she's not on, as they say. If I had just been all up in her face, then I wouldn't have never captured that. I paint on my photographs. This is a little too dark or this is a too light. How could you make that better? Maybe add some paint. <laughs> The beauty of being an artist is the act of doing it. That's where you feed yourself. It's the act of doing. That's where the joy is. Dealing with spirit, dealing with truth and high principles. Now that to me is, is an artist. My work had something to do with forgiveness of where I came from, my experience which was painful and transcending that. I always felt my father's silence, felt his pain ever since I was a little girl, really. He was always very serious. He hardly ever laughed. He sacrificed working 12, 14 hours a day. He was like, mm, you could always be an artist like that, right? So we're sitting there alone, really quiet, and I said, Museum of Modern Art, like that, like that to him. And all of a sudden he has this big chuckle on his face, his eyes and everything, like it was giving him validation, like his, his um, life was worthwhile. And um, um, yeah, I'm, I mean, he died maybe a month after that. Part of me is a little dead in the web because I always wanted to make my parents happy. My work is about shedding light on black culture. It's about the continuation of my ancestry and honoring that. But I wasn't sure if anyone would see my photographs while I was still alive. Maybe the world's ready for me now. 